Welcome to Attack of Opportunity. everyone and welcome to another Rollmongers actual play podcast production tonight attack of opportunity presents episode zero a conversation so why not an interview after that conversation with aiden willems matt witt and myself gm jeff ball um we decided that I could stay in the hot seat and those repertoire of questions that we have scripted to ask other players, each other, the cast, people that give us music content and other podcasts in the future that you'll be hearing Attack of Opportunity. Uh, what better place to start with, well, yours truly. So risking giving up the mic and sitting in the hot seat and becoming under scrutiny of our cast member who loves to pick on me the most, Mr. Aiden Willems. Yes, because, oh no, you're giving up the mic. I mean, you're giving up the hot seat, yes, but at the same time, you get to talk a lot more. So is it really that bad for you, Jeff? Well, considering you're the one that has to interrogate me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what was your inspiration for making the Role Mongers podcast? Like, um, uh, did you get it from someone else or did you just like, Kinda. spur of the moment like a shower idea uh it was kind of like an evolutionary process i mean uh like nerd poker you know the friday night game with friends over was our poker night was our weekend entertainment and then you know uh, my wife and i married at 23 and we had kids right away and we ended up being the host house we had friends over because with little ones we couldn't go out um, and as the years went by, we always had a game going on here or there. Some would come, some would go. Uh, about ooh, this five or six years ago, um, my wife got into a job in an electronics store and met our good friend, Andrew, Ashley Florence, who was interested in D&D. And they had another guy there, uh, Adam Stifler, who knew Pathfinder and sung its praises. And we had gotten a little jaded from fourth edition and, and but this was before fifth edition come out and wanted to do Forgotten Realms in the 3.5 and just kind of went back in time to do old stuff. And it was just kind of saturated, it'd been done, you know, nothing new and exciting coming out. No, no going to the bookstore and going, oh, this is out, you know, should we get this? Should we play this? Uh, which had always been the thing in the past 20 odd years. So we um, eventually, the people coming over kind of died down. And I reached out to some friends. My son had come of age around 15 was interested in Star Wars. So I reached out to a couple of buddies and we started playing Star Wars once every two weeks or once a week in my basement for me to spend time with my son to introduce him to the genre and spend some time with some friends. And these guys were Matt Witt, who's a cast member, Ryan Messina, who's a cast member, uh, their friend Rob, who came and hung out with us and played a bit, uh, my son, and uh, a friend, a coworker of my wife's and our friend uh, Hamza Karaji. We, we played for about a year, year and a half, and then that petered out. And then we discovered Roll20, where we could just sort of come home from your work day and not have to put yourself together to go over to a friend's house. You know, you could sit there in your jammies or you could just have dinner with your spouse or whatever and get on a computer like a lot of people do in this day and age and get on a browser and get on a headset and just maybe game a little bit in the evening for a couple hours. And we got into doing this and we discovered the wonderful world of Roll20. It's great. You sit in there, you set up a game, you have all the maps, you know, you're going along. But we are a couple of players short. So I reached out to other friends. Um to play and we always seem to be a player short so we started garnering people like yourself fast forward to the future how we got, got you but just to get players as roll 20 set up to do hi i'm a gm i got this you know i got this many players let's uh let's let's have you come over and play with us we had one player and she was a sound technician and while she was actually gaming she was at her job doing these sort of music cues for a live performance and we're like oh, you're at, you're at work you're you're getting in trouble? No, 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 I got this, I got this. Um, she got to know us and they were the guys were teasing me about my long-winded stories that go on and she's like, you should, you should podcast. And we said, oh, you know, it's funny you should say that. We were talking about, you know, recording our sessions just for shits and giggles. So I guess you could say it started in a coffee shop with myself, Matt Witt, and Ryan Messina sort of birthed the idea of, you know, could we possibly do this? Um, Matt suddenly got busy. I got Ryan and his lovely wife Loretta to play, and I reached out to Net and found Connor Besh, our technical advisor and guru for all things podcasting, who works with Nathan Spruth in the ReetonEntertainment.com podcast, where they talk about video games together. And these guys we've also garnered as players under 
Clinton Chard now and Clinton's core classics. But that's sort of how that played out. Uh, we had Connor and we had Ryan and his wife and a couple others, and we decided to build chemistry. So we played off air for about three months for these guys to get used to each other. And then we're ready to shoot episode one and Connor switched jobs and became incredibly busy um, in his new employment. <laughs> and, uh, we shot the pilot episode for Mummy's Mask, which was the Indiana Jones adventure that I was dying, that I'd set role mongers up to do. Uh, and it was great, great fun and a great cast. Some audio issues with some. Um, and then Ryan, um, trying to start his own business on top of being a uh, licensed electrician. His wife unfortunately had to bow out. They became incredibly busy and having people that are over 30 in your podcast that have regular lives and jobs and stuff, even trying to get people together Friday night is difficult. So I started over with Connor and the two of us went back, went online, role mongers. And these are the, this is that past year where we found you and Frank Hamilton at the end of that year, but we spent an entire year online auditioning, starting Mummy's Mask, stopping it, starting it over, different groups, different people, trying to find chemistry, and lots of fun, great players out there, but just not what we're looking for or always with the audio issue because everything we do is online. We are not a bunch of people sitting around a microphone in one single room. <clears throat> and a year later, back around not so busy anymore, came Matt and Ryan, and I reached out to them. It's like, okay, let's do Star Wars again. They'll make a great podcast, and we'll, you know, we'll wait with mummy's mask until connor's not so busy and we found you online auditioning you for a dm and we found frank hamilton who's now one of our executive producers and he actually his real life dungeon master clinton chard they share a game with buddy saturday night frank was like oh you gotta meet my you know you gotta meet my guy my guy so i reeled in clinton chard with promises of podcasting glory and he's an excellent dm he's a much more dynamic voice than i do and um he does clinton's core classics and i play on that with you when we and we've got our guys connor and nathan who are the podcasters and then we have our our friday night uh star wars game you and me and i'm gming and we have all my buddies and a couple extras in there including frank and now we're looking to expand and rollmongers the podcast just for mummy's mass kind of fell by the wayside and rollmongers actual play podcasts plural was sort of born into a production company and now we have several we have we shot first the star wars saga edition donna defiance campaign from the old saga rules we have Alignment Undetermined, a throwback to the old Castle Amber, X2 Castle Amberville uh, from the basic set, a romp through a medieval crazy French mansion, real rabbit hole down the Alice Wonderland kind of stuff. We are setting up for a couple more games in the future, which I can't talk about just yet. And we're trying to do this, this idea of like a talk show where we were going to interview our own cast and behind the scenes look or, you know, talk to the music providers. People that said, hey, you can use my music. And we're like, oh, thanks. And you just put their name at the bottom of your track. But we want to do more. We want to interview them. We want to say, hey, you know, what got you into music? And thank you so much for using your stuff. And, you know, um, all of our followers want to know your, your origin story. And can we have your followers as well? You know, cross posting all this idea. So that's sort of a, sorry, it's a long winded explanation as I'm known for, but it was sort of an evolution process. One thing just kind of led to the other and got more and more ideas along the way. Cool. So uh, next question. Uh, so whose music do you use? Are there any artists that directly contribute to the show or is it, do you message people that already have music and you adapt that? To Anybody that's copyright free. <laughs> um, I, I am the editor for role mongers at the moment. Now you yourself do, do help in that process as does Jay Tamlin and Matt wet a little bit as well. Uh, but the music selection is on myself and I scour the net for royalty free copyright free music. That sounds epic enough to lay in the background as combat music or just suit a mood. And it's a lot of fun actually in itself, time consuming, but a lot of fun, but a couple of names of, a couple of styles and a couple of names have come up. Um, one gentleman actually lives in my city and he comes into our, our store. I'm a green grocer by trade. Uh, it's Jeff Knight and he has his own YouTube page and he is a music enthusiast and composer, has his own studio and has his own Facebook page. And we use a lot of his guitar riffs to promote a backdrop ambient sound for your Star Wars character, your emo Jedi, as it were, who's running around with his guitar axe. That's a lot of Jeff Knight's music is left laid in the background to sort of promote the feel of your character. Uh, and I actually know him in person. 
Um, from there, we go to uh, Charles Sapp, a.k.a. Um, St. Ronan, also on YouTube, who has great uh, a great ballad called Jedi Stray. This fine American gentleman is just a pleasure to work with. He's really, really tried hard to produce his own music. He's got a couple tracks up and, uh, you know, for talk about somebody who's had sort of a downtrodden life and have it directly affect his music. We have an interview with him and we're going to uh, interview him again coming up in Attack of Opportunity. Uh, sweet, sweet man, really friendly. And again, you know, these people are starting out like us. So they're like, Hey, you know, sure. You can use our stuff. Please promote it. And we're like, yes, 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 we will. And you know, don't forget to mention us, but, uh, that sort of love that back and forth at our low level, our unfamiliarity, our minor, minor non-existent celebrity on the net, um, we stand as a group, you know, I'll reach out to someone and say, Hey, can I use your music? And this is what we're all about. And they're like, Oh, your show is very nice. And but yeah, as long as you credit us and back and forth. So we're, we're the low budget. We're not um, paying royalties to any big song that'll grab your mood or grab anything just yet. A couple names, a couple of names I really respect that actually practically do this, if not do this full time and offer their music free are Ross Bugden from uh, Canada. Um, Adam Valinsky, I'm sorry if I say your name, name wrong, sir. Uh, Mattelia Capaletti, again, I'm sorry, sir, if I'm saying your name wrong. Um, a, a gentleman by, goes by White Sand. Um, and then we have these, these classic sites called Non Copyright Music or the Audio Library of, and it's a collaboration. One of my favorites uh, is Kevin McLeod. He puts together ensembles, some are songs, some are ambience, and everything. And there's a lot of his tracks that you can, you'll actually find. Uh, cr content creators on YouTube using his music constantly. Very, very talented artists, a lot of them. And we indulge in their free stuff. And I try to give them as much credit as I can. I've even tried to reach out to a bunch of them saying, hey, we'd really like to interview you. But of course, at the moment, we're small potatoes, so I don't think we're going to garner their interest just yet. And we sing. You have caught myself, Matt, especially who actually is in a band and lead singer for the Harry Peterson band who can actually sing, unlike myself, who just likes singing for parody sake and Frank. And even you, <laughs> I don't think I've heard you join in with us, but there'll be a, there'll be movie moments. Yeah, and song I've, I've joined in once or twice. Thank you yeah, very much. There's a couple of movie moments in there where we'll sing the appropriate mood song for six seconds before we kill a royalty or garner a royalty <laughs> free from some classic. Well, it's really interesting. I didn't know about all of those uh, other artists that you had pulled in for music. So what's your audio setup like? Uh, what kind of mic do you use? What recording software do you use? Um, how about editing as uh, well? Again, on the low budget, no budget, um, I've invested, well, mostly because of the tower I bought for a 700 Canadian. Um, I'm about, we're about two, three years into this project and I'm about two grand in the hole. Uh, some great contributions for subscriptions from our executive producer and player, Frank Hamilton, executive producer and DM and player, Clinton Chard. Um, so those, those of our cast that can help me do, uh, those of you that can't give me time. And in my experience now, time is money. Your time that you guys help me edit or your time that you guys go and do a project for me, do some of the math work and some of the this and then the reading and the backstory and stuff to help us pull off these shows is invaluable to me. It's just as well as, you know, filling someone's PayPal account. And everyone helps. Everyone does contribute um, quite a bit more than I expected, which is great. My setup, I'm using a Samsung Meteor mic at the moment which is just a hair below standard for the industry standard of the low budget, no budget Yeti. These are USB plug and play mics. These are not condenser mics where you see the guy with the big pop filter and the big fuzzy windscreen and the big armature hanging down like a professional podcaster. Uh, I had one of those, but my computer couldn't handle it. And you know, one fine day when there's upgrading all around, or maybe we'll hit Patreon for equipment upgrade upgrades and that kind of thing to help support the projects that we are into. Um, computer is standard you know no high processing we use uh, audacity for editing it's a free software program i use obs for recording it's actually built for streaming but i use it to either do a screen capture of our roll 20 board so people can see minis and any raw uncut stuff that we put on our, our youtube channel for role mongers on youtube but the finished product the soundcloud based podcasts that we produce that have music and everything i record using obs i use audacity to rip the sound lay out a track find music add it put it together edit cut level the whole bit and depending on which podcasts we're doing 
if it's kind of raw and we've got really good flowing chemistry like Clinton's Core Classics, an hour episode takes me about an hour or so to edit because I'm laying uh, repetitive music that I've cop- non-copyright in the background, some good intro, outro kind of stuff, leveling and noise reduction, and boom, we're done. Star Wars, um, because of our dynamic cast, because I repeat myself, because some of our cast members um, either shy on the mic or there's audio issues with their microphones because some have a high end that sound crappy because they have bad internet where they are in the States or they have low end mics that sound great and overpower and make everything crack. Um, (laughs) Star Wars is where a lot of my time goes. Uh, not just because it's a labor of love, just because we have more, we seem to have more technical issues with that podcast than any of the other ones that we're putting up. And I can spend at least five to 10 hours an episode for an hour and a half episode on those through the week in whatever free time I have. Well, looking at the numbers, I say that's because more of the people in Star Wars are Canadian than American. Just think about it. Clinton score classics. The only Canadian in there is you and we have no problems. Yet Star Wars and <laughs> Castle Lambert, it's, uh, it's, uh, with a lot more Canadian, a lot more audio we, issues. We, we, we are, I mean, we are proudly. I'm not a, saying anything; <laughs> just the correlations there. Uh, proudly a North American, the entire continent podcast. We have uh, well, there's myself, Matt Witt, Ryan Messina, uh, my future son-in-law Jay Tamlin are all Canadian. We have yourself, Aiden Willems, Frank Hamilton, Clinton Chard, Connor Besh. Uh, our special guest star in who's technically a role monger now he loves playing with us uh, and our new guy for that podcast is Nathan Spruth from the retinentertainment.com podcast where he talks about video games you should check him out and that's five for the American side so four and five now not that we wouldn't have someone from other countries or whatever it's just these are the people that ended up on roll 20 and then you know we got in bed with them and everything but we're finding that even though everyone's spread all over North America, the map, it's not just microphone price and quality. It's a lot to do with the internet connection and what server that we use. We talk on Twitch TV. We use it as a chat client so I can control each individual volume levels. And that's a free app to use. Um, and depending who hosts the call, it uses a different server around Canada and the States. And that can have a huge, huge effect on latency and audio quality as well. But we're, we're having fun and, you know, learning as we go. You know, when you're when you're doing the poor man's podcast, as I call it, you uh, you got to really invest time because you don't have the money. You know, you got to learn how to use the audacity properly. You got to learn how to set these things up from someone. And if if a crew member has the technical skills, great. Uh, if not, there's a lot of reading and a lot of time. But it's a labor of love. We're having a great time playing. I'm having a great time creating this stuff and editing this stuff. And it has nothing to do with Canada versus America. America versus Canada <laughs> for audio quality. <laughs> Of, co- of course not. Of course, oh, of course not. not. I would no, never no, insinuate no, something no. like that. Out the rivalry. Um, I guess that brings us brings us around to the question. I'm surprised you're not asking about you and me. I guess we'll save that for your interview um, about how we found you. You auditioned to be a GM, and we liked you so much as a player. We're like, like, let's not ruin it. Let's just stay a player, and <laughs> you know, we won't jade you by having you a GM or refuse you as a GM. And um, you were the new guy, and a little intimidated that half of us you knew were friends and the other half before we got our hands on Frank and made you feel at home, you kind of felt isolated. And I said, oh, just pretend you know us. Just forget it. These guys are really friendly. Just pretend you know us for years. You could pick on anybody you want. And you started picking on me for no good reason. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I think you, you said, look, pick on me like I can handle it. Oh, is that what I said? Okay. Well, I do like the sort of... I, uh, Jimmy I don't Kimmel... remember, Matt. I can barely remember what I had for breakfast yesterday. So <laughs> I'm, really... I'm not sure. How I'm just you... assuming. How here. long have you been with us? Now we're getting to be interviewed. Uh, with you. It's coming up to a year this January. Oh, yeah. I think January 8th, something like that. Right around, uh, what, your 30 years of GMing or something? Well, yeah. Uh, that's coming up this January because I started when I was 16. Um, but uh, for the record... Uh, Mr. Aiden Willems, ladies and gentlemen, has been a huge help. I'm texting him all week long because as a college student, I know he has more free time. <laughs> as a university <laughs> student, I can bug him about some technical issues or ask his opinion on a couple of things. I get feed him footage to listen to, to do half my work for me. Um, so, you know, we have a, a fun working relationship. But when we're on air together, we just can't help it. It's just, it's become our niche. Uh, it's Matt 
Damon versus Jimmy Kimmel now with you and I, and uh, not so much in Clint's core classics, but uh, definitely in the Star Wars one. You know, you put forward that the DM is evil. The GM must be, you know, must be reckoned with, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, well, OK, <laughs> it doesn't help that you're constantly trying to convert me to the dark side. Well, I thought that would play out well, the, the temptation. And uh, anyway, sorry. Uh, next question. So are you anywhere else uh, on the web besides SoundCloud? Uh, well, as I was saying before, we have a YouTube channel that we put raw content up. Uh, there is a small, there's a different, let's say a different market. Uh, podcasting with editing and polish and music at an ambience is our end game. But we do put up, for those that like watching the sort of video of the walkthrough on Roll20 and the mini minis and some of the great maps we've got our hands on. And it's raw and cut because I haven't, I've dabbled in video editing, but um, it's a whole other ball of wax, and I believe I can do it. It's just, it's hugely, hugely time-consuming, so I haven't touched it much. Um, we throw Clinton's Core Classics online uncut. We throw Clinton's Core Classics on SoundCloud, polished lightly, but but edited. We have a Facebook page, Rollmongers on Facebook, where we post a bunch of stuff there and pick pictures and stuff. Uh, all the memes that uh, I come up with where I've reached into all the cast members' Facebook pages, pulled out fun pictures, and made, turned it into a meme to promote a track. Um, There's a great picture of you in your Star Wars t-shirt taking a selfie, and I've, I've memed it up saying, you know, this is your destiny maybe, hinting at the dark side because you're wearing a Vader shirt. You know, <laughs> things, different things like that made fun of everybody. Um, and myself. Uh, we've got recently got a picture up there of myself pulling the Superman chest t-shirt open and it's our logo that we got printed on a t-shirt first copy. Um, I've even found Matt Witt wearing a Chewbacca onesie. He came in late night shopping in my store with his girlfriend and he's wearing the Chewbacca onesie and I ran up on him and took did snap photos with his permission of course oh, but snap gosh. photos of that. <laughs> you know, he's living the dream that guy I tell you. Love this guy. Uh. Well, I think we have time for one more question, and you might not want to answer this. So, what can we expect in the future? Uh, any hints on like new games uh, for either Pathfinder or Star Wars, or are we just stick into what we have? At the okay, moment, well, which no, is... no promises. Um, we are seriously looking at War for the Crown. It, it, we hear it's okay. a Game of Thronesy thing that's coming out in February. We're going to take a serious look at it. Uh, of course, I'm always dying to go back to Mummy's Mask. Uh, we're bringing in a new cast member, um, an old gaming buddy of mine, a good friend of my wife's, Ashley Florence, to add to the cast. Um, you may see a cameo, if not a permanent position, given to my daughter, Alexandria, in Alignment Undetermined, the Castle Amber in the Frank's Free For All. She might be doing cameos and playing alongside us there. As well as Attack of Opportunity, this show will will launch uh, as sort of a little talk show behind the scenes look for us. Um, we're playing around with the idea of mythic, uh, mythic murder hobos, as we're teasingly possibly in pre-production talking about it, doing some real Jason and the Argonauts kind of campaign and using the mythic rules, maybe lay, because of the setting that it's in, in Galorian off of Katapesh, um, maybe laying that over a big adventure path. Um, but I don't want to get too much in it. I don't want people hearing this and go, oh, that's a great idea. And they didn't do it yet. And, you know, get well, it. Yeah. But uh, lots of ideas, tons of ideas. There's no, not enough time to do them. So much in store. Already? <laughs> that's all I'm at liberty to say. Oh, well, hey, that, that is fair. Well, thanks for uh, the hot seat for uh, and the mic for a little bit to let me interview you. Oh, thank you. Thanks for doing this. Um, of course. Podcasting is new to us. DMing, I've been doing for a long time, but doing the talk show hosting back and forth is quite, quite new. We are breaking new ground. We're not even sure if this is going to work. Uh, this could end up on a cutting room floor in obscurity. But we do have clips up on SoundCloud, little pieces and snippets of those interviews that we plan on putting forth in the new year. And we hope that our listeners enjoy them. Sort of behind the scenes look at us, at what we do. And I guess starting with yours truly. This could be episode zero. Unless I can find somebody better to interview <laughs> than you interviewing me i mean I, I think there's everyone is better than you for the interview probably Jeff, pro personally, probably but, uh, if i could find <laughs> if i could find a, a johnny carson in our in our group to do this other than myself i would jump at it yeah, maybe clinton he's got a good voice yeah yeah we'll call him up now anyway thanks for having me yeah thanks for coming We were just discussing...
replacing breaths. Now, when you're on the microphone like we are now, um, you guys have to wait your turn in character, but because I do the majority of the speaking, there's all these <gasps> breath, breath. And recently in Nicole's video, uh, the 200 sub celebration, you can hear me breathing. And you guys were just telling me about, uh, you know, learning the proper techniques or whatever. Aiden, you said you're a swimmer? Yep. Been swimming since I was probably three or four. Oh, yeah. And uh, so obviously there's like deep breath regulation there. And you also said something about singing. Yeah, I do a bit of vocalization and singing. I mean, not professionally, of course, but like, yeah, in the car, I'm constantly singing. So that helps out. Well, Matt's, plus I play a saxophone. That yeah, requires a lot of that. sax man. <laughs> Matt's a musician and is lead singer in his band. And um, I, I like to sing. I, I have movies in my head constantly and I sing, but I'm horrible. Like I do not have a singing voice. And I apologize constantly doing that. Um, even Connor uh, when the games got sessions got long or we were just laid back and playing casually, you could hear him pull out his guitar and he'd lean back and he'd str- he wouldn't have the amp in, but he'd be strumming away, you know, in between the mics, uh, push to talk kind of thing. But um, what about you, Matt? Is is uh, Rahal uh, a bit of a music man, a song and dance man, and, and he's got the suit for it? Oh, he's got his fingers into every industry, but entertainment's a particularly good one because it's very unregulated. <laughs> <laughs> On the hollow net, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the best thing uh, was that shock jock. Uh, ba- was based on the um, the British book sci-fi, which became an old uh, television series, like a mini series, and then recently got picked up by Hollywood a couple of years back and was made a major motion picture. And the the tagline for it is um, "Don't panic," because this guy, this British guy, comes wandering out one day for his paper in his house coat, and his neighbor's there, and they learn the Earth's about to be destroyed, and his neighbor whips out a white towel and starts waving it to hitchhike a ride in space, because the entire series was called The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And this guy in his pajamas gets whisked along on a multitude of crazy adventures, including meeting this two-handed man called... Bagel yeah, it's Bo- Douglas Adams' book. Yeah, Z- Zaybox, Zaybod, Zaybod, Z- Zaybod, Bbox. Yeah, the name? movie was actually a pretty good representation of the book. But yeah, and um, we were joking around. I don't know if this. I can't remember if this hit the editing floor or not. We were joking around where R four, R R four, the droid that Jay bought is um, whose master really was, and everything. And you guys find this old recording of this shock jock that I made up on the spot, which is somewhere between a really, really, really bad version of Baybox and like Howard Stern or something. And he's like, Hey, oh, uh, you know, like the, the stereotypical, not a professional like Mr. Stern, who's awesome, but um, I got to sell my droid now. And the droid's like, what? <laughs> he shuts him off and he ends up in Sal's shop. But um, I can sing a little bit if I'm doing a stereotypical voice like a Monty Python voice or a fake country voice or something. I can belt out some tunes and do like a parody tune, but that is it. Um, my lack of musical training through my voice comes, uh, comes out pretty quick. As far as singing goes, I do love music. I used to play keyboards in a band and, uh, we played a lot of rush Genesis. Yes. Super tramp was crazy. Oh, yes. Yes. yes is- well, really this, tough to this, play on keys. This was the and... 80s. Picture a 16-year-old Jeff who had learned to play a keyboard on his grandfather's... Wait, 80s? Are you sure it wasn't 60s? No. Oh! No, not that, not that old little man. Not that old. Wiki. I was just an infant. <laughs> I was 16, and I was taken into a band, and our bassist who had the long hair like Getty Lee was a huge Rush fan, and he was playing bass and keyboards, and we had this very talented young... What was his name? Uh, Doug Place. Where was the band? We never had a name. Was it Doug Place? No, but I mean, like, where where was the band? Like, where was this? Oh, where'd you grow up? Um, this is outside of Balsover, Ontario, oh, okay. on the Trent yeah. Severn Waterway. I grew up on the river. I was born in Richmond Hill in the city, but we, on the, like nine, ten years old, we move up to the country, and there's this beautiful river that separates Lake Simcoe, which is north of Lake Ontario. So if anyone Googled Lake Ontario, which is on the border of the states in Canada, they'll see this little um, lake. It's pretty big, actually, but it looks like a, f- a hand finger pointing down with the thumb out, and that's like Simcoe. And if you track to the right, if you track east of that, the Trent Seven Waterway goes along and white weaves, and, and we had this beautiful spot right on the river. So we were always, I know, a ton of things, nautical and power boats and all that kind of thing. 
and uh, behind me was this restaurant right on Highway 48 called the Trent Place Restaurant. And they had these little cabins that you could rent like a motel that they never really used. And the when the place changed ownership when I was in my early to mid-teens, the 19, 20-year-old Doug Place, the son, set up a band room. And he had a buddy, uh, Ian, that was in the city. And my brother was hanging around with a new guy that came to school. And both my brother and Jim Kersley played guitar. Um... And uh, Ian got my my brother Ian. This is a different Ian. My brother Ian got into metal, so he got into Iron Maiden and and uh, was huge '70s fan, Led Zeppelin, all that kind of thing. Where Doug and everything, we were into what was current at this time that came out of the '70s into the mid '80s was all your synthesizer stuff. So Phil Collins had left Genesis, but we were playing Genesis tunes. Yes, lots of Rush, lots of uh, well, we tried Super Tramp. And this is where I had a van. Yeah, Super Tramp is really tough. Right. My granddad, when I was like eight or nine, my granddad had an actual organ, like with the foot pedals and the two keyboards and everything. But your left hand's all chords and I could play it. Fast forward to the 80s when everyone's playing synthesizers stacked on multiple levels or 180 degrees each hand, which would throw totally throw off a pianist. But for me, it was like no problem because I'm used to playing two keyboards. So that was my strength. My weakness was I had poor fingering in my left hand because... Piano sheet music has strong fingering for both hands. Organ music is written, the left hand is strictly chords, mostly, and you back it up with a heavy pedal chord. So one, there was certain music that I could play, and a lot of it was these rock bands that were using synthesizers as a backup instrument, not a lead instrument the way Supertramp does or the way you know Yes does. Um, that uh, opening chord for Owner of a Lonely Heart you have to press 11 keys and a man only has 10 fingers. It's tricky and you're spanning the entire keyboard, but it's doable by laying one finger over on one of the black keys and you do this massive dun, 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 and it goes into the song, right? Um, so we're playing and we're playing and Ian came up from Toronto. My brother kind of got into a different crowd and uh, we're driving out to a band session uh, that was held somewhere else. And Doug and Jim in the front seat start talking about a Dragonlance novel that they're sharing back and forth. And they're talking about Wizards of the Conclave and all this Tracy Hickman and Margaret Weiss writing. And I'm like, mm, I know this. Like, I know fantasy. Dad watches, you know, watched Conan and sci-fi and all this kind of stuff. My dad um, read all the Dune books and all the, you know, Clan of the Cave Bear stuff. And so I'd been exposed to both fantasy and sci-fi in the home. But this was, you know, this was a 1981 best-selling trilogy. And it was about, mm, let's say, 1988, 1989. So the book was already a couple of years old, but it was really good stuff. And it was my Lord of the Rings. It was my eight people go on a big journey fellowship you know, save the world, that kind of thing. Romances within the party, all that kind of stuff. Uh, See, I was spoiled when it comes to books. My mom read The Hobbit to us when we were like infants. That's what that, I learned how to read yeah, well, reading they, The Hobbit. They made my older brother read The Hobbit in school, but not us. They cut it out of the criterion by the time I got through high school and, and grade school. But when the band couldn't play, Doug is like, you know, there's a game we could play that's based on these books and we're like okay so he pulls out the basic set gary gygax the basic D D, where there was each character class was its own race as well there was the human rogue which was called the thief the human fighter was the there was the warrior and you know you only had so many classes and we started playing D D, and i just went nuts i was the worst player ever he'd go to the bathroom i'd be peeking over the screens looking at the maps i was just completely engrossed in the concept of a story narrative role-playing board game where half of it was maps and grids and stuff in front of you, you could see the other half was your open imagination and acting because i got into drama in high school as well as the one guy wasn't playing he was the storyteller and i got so engrossed and so uh, annoying to play with that doug pulled me aside and he said you know i think you'd actually be good at this i, I wouldn't mind playing so i started dming at the age of 16 and i've been doing it for almost 30 years now this January coming up will be my 30-year anniversary as a dungeon master or game master, if you will. And we're probably going to have some special event for role mongers. Uh, crowned only by Clinton, who's actually a little bit older than me. But um, yeah, that's accidentally how my story came out. Thanks for the interview, guys. 
<laughs> Jay Nicole. Yeah, I was just thinking that. I was like, I really hope he's recording this because we can just use this for his interview part. <laughs>